So look, if you want to grow your wealth, your income, and increase the amount of time off, then these are the shortcuts that can help. Welcome to the Wealth Creation Podcast. Hey everybody, it's Dan Lato speaking. A little bit windy today, so I apologise. Uh, but let's get this video done, shall we? Uh, let's talk about your expenditure for a little bit. You know me and money. I like to talk about it. I like to talk about how much money you're spending. Uh, but in particular, I like to also contemplate about money that I'm spending on things that are not generating an income versus spending money on things that do generate an income. We've been investing in property for over 20 years now. And right from the very start, the whole reason we were investing in property is that we knew it was an asset. And if you remember, an asset is something that puts money in your pocket. And so that's the only reason why we actually did it, was to generate cash flow. You know, that we're a cash flow investor. That's what we do. We didn't put money into pension. We put every spare penny that we, we had into property. And here we are more than 20 years later. And that gamble, if you like, paid off. It was a, a very good gamble to take, if you like, if you want to use that word. I don't like to use that word. It was an investment. Uh, but I see it time and time and time again. I mean, my coffee, for example... Um, I don't go to Starbucks or Costa and we don't really have them here. I might go to them every so often if I fancy something a little bit nicer or a little bit different. But my coffee comes in a, a, a cheap coffee cup. I make my own. And you might be like, Dan, it's like three pounds. You're just saving three pound a day. Three pound a day is 900 pound a year. That's a lot of money. It's a thousand pound a year. That's a lot of money. Over 20 years, that's a 20,000 pound deposit on a buy to let that pays you then more money. Why would you spend money on something that doesn't give you an income back? And we have this idea that it's going to cost an awful lot of money. I haven't got any spare money to invest on. I spend everything that I earn. Well, you've got two choices. One, cut your expenditure. Two, increase what you earn, either from a job or from a side hustle or a second job or get more qualified and more experienced at what you do and go up the corporate ladder. But keep those costs as low as you can. I mean, any little bit of money, any spare bit of money, just got to go off into something that's going to generate cash flow. Now, look, you don't have to spend thousands of pounds. You can spend hundreds of pounds. You don't even have to spend hundreds of pounds. You can buy AT&T for less than $30, right? Less than $30 a share. It actually cost you almost as much to buy the share than the actual share itself if you take into account fees for buying. Uh, but save up a thousand pounds and buy a thousand pounds worth of AT&T, a thousand pounds worth of Amazon. It doesn't matter. Amazon have just actually had a five for one split, makes the stock very accessible for normal people. It's now not whatever it was, £500 a share, whatever it, the price was before. It's now very accessible. Even Tesla, that was almost two and a half grand, is now, what, around the 420 mark, around dollars, 420 as we're filming today, start of September sometime, uh, just after the five to one split. Uh, and Amazon, sorry, did a four to one split, I think it was. But you don't need thousands of pounds to start investing. You can just start low. One of the reasons I go for AT&T, and also we're in, uh, with a couple of insurance companies, is that they've got dividends of at least 6%. And we did a previous video on how to generate cash flow. Sorry, how to how to generate a six percent return on your uh, net worth. That's exactly how you do it. You start off really, really small. Get an ISA, move a hundred pound a month into it. One of the mistakes that I really regret going back a long time ago. I can't remember the name of a company. NS and I maybe they used to have a a, a, a a branch in Leeds a long, long, long time ago. Um, I can't remember what we called. But when I was 18, 19, I opened an account. I was putting 100 pound a month in, and I was amazed. You know, after 12 months, I had like two and a half grand in there because it had gone up so much. And I closed it down. I took all the money out and bought myself a car. That's absolutely crazy. Let's look at that. So I have this thing that's generating cash flow and all the dividends get put back into it so it grows even faster, which is why it grew in the first place. So that's an asset that's appreciating and generating cash because the shares are going up in value too. And I take that money out and I put it into two and a half grand into a car, uh, 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 a liability that depreciates in value, doesn't give me any money. And I never opened it up again. It's one of my big regrets in life that I didn't do that. And luckily, uh, when I was age 26, we found the light and we started investing in property. But you've got to also begin this journey. But before you start that journey, you've got to pay down your debt. If you've got credit cards, car loans, loans, store cards, anything like that, you've got to pay that stuff off. Anything more than 6 7%. Because what's the point of earning 6% in the FTSE 100 when you're paying out 14% on a credit card or a loan or a store card. It just doesn't make sense. But these are the ways in which you should be doing it. Look, no one ever went bust paying down debt. Paying down debt is a really good thing to do. But also, in addition to paying down debt, you've then got to start 
buying into assets that's going to generate a monthly cash flow. So if this is your outgoings and this is your income, your outgoings go down and your income goes up. And the more you do this, the bigger this gap gets. So you reach the point eventually where your income from your assets exceeds all of your outgoings. It means you can leave work. You don't have to work anymore. And you can just focus full time on investing and looking for opportunities and deals and reading uh, uh, statements of corporate entities and that kind of thing like Warren Buffett does. But you've got to start now and you don't have to start big. You've just got to start small. But whatever you do, you've got to start. Hope that's useful for you from the heart and we'll speak to you on the next video. My name's Dan Latter. Take care. Hey, it's Dan here. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Please click like or subscribe to the entire podcast.